All right, YouTube, this is going to be a tournament game I played on Friday in the Friday Night Action Quad. Uh, I don't want to talk. I'll call them back later. Um, in the Friday Action Quad at the new St. Louis Chess Club. It was game 25 minutes with a five-second time delay, and it was against a um, good friend of mine named Nick Cardinal. Now, he's an expert-level player. His rating's about 2,000, and um, I am notorious for losing to him by dropping a piece or some obnoxiously bad move. In this game, although he did win, I actually didn't screw up royally. So I was very proud that I actually didn't screw up. Anyway, I'm going to go over the game because I think it was very interesting. At one point, I would have had an advantage, but then he was able to capitalize on my mistakes, and um, he came through and won the game. And it's like they say, um, whoever makes the second to last mistake will be the one who wins. So, I played white in this game, and... Um, this game was quick rated, where our ratings are very pretty equally matched. I think my quick rating is about 1990, and his at the time was about 1960 or 70, so pretty close. Um, I played e4, he played c5, and I played knight to c3. This is called the closed Sicilian variation. Uh, normally, I'd play the knight to f3, but I know that Nick has a pretty good understanding of the classical Sicilian, and I didn't want to go into his, you know, his home preparation, so I figured I'd change it up a bit. He plays. Knight c6, which is totally reasonable. g3, common in close Sicilian strategy. Of course, moves like bishop to c4 or knight to f3 are reasonable, but then you would transpose back into the open variation, most likely. So g6, bishop to g2, bishop to g7. It's a very typical strategy for black. d3, knight f6, bishop e3, and he castles. Now, in the game, I didn't even notice that I could take that pawn, which kind of worried me, because usually I like to be a little more alert. But um, if white takes this pawn, black will get some compensation for it. Well, I probably just should have grabbed it, but I didn't even see it when we were playing. I was so focused on making the opening moves that I forgot about taking. So, a little mistake on my part. I played h3. And this is to keep the knight from jumping here and giving that bishop trouble after my queen comes to d2, which is a common strategy. So, he plays knight to d4. So the knight does have a pretty strong position for a knight, but he's not threatening anything immediately. Um, I don't want to trade off yet, because my bishop is maybe a more powerful piece than that knight, because it still has the option to go down here and try to trade off later. So, I decided to play knight on gd2 which threatens to win a pawn by knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, and bishop recaptures pawn. He plays e5, and this um, really determines the nature of the position here. A lot of times in the closed Sicilian, the pawn likes to come to e6 and prepare a d5 advance. Now he has a pretty iron grip on d4, but he's also weak in the d5 square, and I was able to play to that in my favor a little bit later. So e5, castles, um, B6. And this is a uh, reasonable move, but perhaps a little better. May have been D6 with the more classical development of the bishop. Nick wants to Fianchetto to B7 or even A6 to pressure this diagonal. Although I'm not quite sure what his plan was at this point. Um, I played F4. It's a very typical close Sicilian advance, trying to open a line for an attack. This white and the close Sicilian usually will attack the king side, and open lines are good. And here, I think Nick made a slight mistake. And when I looked over the game with Fritz 11, it immediately evaluated position now to be relatively equal, but after the move, Nick made to be about three quarters of a pawn better for white. So maybe a slight mistake was pawn takes pawn. And I recaptured with the knight, and I thought that my position may be a little better here because of the power that white has on his d5 square. Although it's far from being decided, I. I, I liked my position here. So um, he plays e6. Now here's where I had to calculate. This is the time in the game where I took my first relatively long think. It's a 25-minute you know, game. You can't take too long. We were taking about 20 seconds to move. Now I took about two minutes to consider the move e5, which is very interesting tactically because it opens up this diagonal and attacks the knight. Now I came to the conclusion that this move wouldn't be good because of the following variation. Pawn takes pawn, bishop takes rook. Sorry, I have to stand on my tiptoes to get over there. 
Um, pawn ta takes knight. Bishop takes pawn. Bishop takes h3 with an attack on the bishop and an attack on the rook. The bishop comes back to g2. And then, uh, then an exchange, bishop for bishop. And black would have a lot of compensation for the exchange there. He would have um, two pawns for the exchange, actually only one pawn for the exchange, and my king would be exposed. So it's really an interesting position. And um, I thought that black's compensation would be enough for the exchange, and I decided not to do that. So let me put these back really quick, try to remember where the heck they are. I'm never good at remembering where pieces are. So where are we at here? Rook down here, bishop here. E pawn. Here. Okay, so in the game I decided to play this actually here. Bishop takes knight. And um, this is kind of a questionable move because although I can make a target out of his d pawn, it might not be a good idea to give up the dark square bishop for that knight because then his will be unchallenged. It probably wasn't a mistake in this position, but it's something that needs to be considered. And in a long game, you know, you want to consider it more than the, you know, two minutes I took. So, of course, his reply was very obvious. Pawn takes pawn. And now I play dino gd2, which is to reposition to attack the pawn. Now, for about three seconds, I thought, oh, crud, my knight's trapped. But then I thought, like, I can go to d5, I'm okay. This is an option for him, though. He didn't do this, but it definitely gets into kind of a funky looking pawn structure, although I think the position would still be pretty equal. But he did not he did not do that. He played let me check this is my score sheet here just to make sure. I probably have this game memorized, but I always like to look it so I don't mess up and have to go back later. Okay. Bishop A6. And I thought this was a slightly unusual development of the bishop. Now, in the end game, the bishop was actually very useful on this square, but right now it didn't serve a whole lot of a purpose there. So maybe, you know, bishop to d7 might have been better, perhaps. Um, knight takes d4, and then um, knight h5. Sorry about that board wiggling. Knight to h5 for black. Very, very tactical, tricky move, okay? Um, at first glance, I thought, oh, knight takes knight, pawn takes, queen takes knight. I'll win a pawn. But... If knight takes knight, bishop takes knight, check, and then followed by recovering the knight, he would be up a piece. So I, I better not do that. So the question becomes, where do I move this knight? Well, maybe I could protect, protect it, but then this will be hanging. So I decided to play knight to c6, which um, attacked the queen and um, gain, gain, gain the gain the time back, if you understand what I'm saying. It took the initiative back. He made a threat. I made a threat, now he has to respond to me. And he does so with a strong move. He plays queen to g5, which um, puts queen on an aggressive square, pressures g3, and um, just kind of causes me a little trouble. Of course, I'm not in a, too much danger here. g5, knight takes g5, and now if um, queen takes g5, h5 rather, queen takes queen, pawn takes, and white will be much better after suppose like rook to b1 to guard the bq pawn. So he plays pawn takes knight. And now, I really thought I had a better position here, but I had a bad miscalculation coming up that may have cost me the game, or at least cost me a huge advantage. So, g takes h5, rook f5, an aggressive deployment of the rook, queen takes g3, knight e7 check. So I'm trying to head back to this very powerful outpost on the f5 score, where I think I can be very active and very strong. Um, anyway, king h8, and um, now comes my miscalculation, and I'll save that for part two, because I'm almost up to ten minutes. Um, part two I should make in the next half an hour to an hour. This will probably be three parts, seeing that it took about ten minutes to get to this phase of the game. All right, right now I think that white has a slight, nice advantage, nothing too... Not enough to say I was winning, but something to play for. I, my pieces are going to be very aggressively placed. I played the latter half of the game poorly, and I'm quite disappointed. So um, stay tuned for an update.